How did you get involved as a vineyard owner? Well, essentially from being a, a keen wine consumer and uh, uh, belonging to the Cellar Masters Wine Club here in Christchurch back in the 1980s. And um, I, you know, I really was interested in gaining you know, more knowledge about wine and appreciation of it. And uh, that led to me in 1989 uh, taking a sabbatical from the law practice that I was in at the time and um, spending six weeks on the road in France uh, on a solo cycle journey through the, the main wine regions and um, uh, just getting a feel for what, what happens on the land and uh, tasting some pretty good wines along the way and just ex expanding my knowledge and uh, uh, appreciation of the industry. Now you wrote a book about that. Yes, I've written an e-book. Uh, a wine lover's tour de France, based on that journey of two and a half thousand kilometres in six weeks. So I was doing a lot of cycling and uh, tasting wines along the way as well. And that's that's been published on uh, Amazon.com, and uh, I'm getting good sales for it. And then, of course, you ended up owning and developing Fiddler's Green. Yeah, that was uh, in 1994. We um, uh, bought a bare land block of 50 acres at Wipera on George's Road and um, commenced to develop that and uh, create uh, a new wine brand, Fiddler's Green. So that was a family business involving Jenny, my wife, and also our eldest son, Ben, uh, who had done a postgraduate um, course at Lincoln in viticulture. Damn hard work though, wasn't it? It, it is demanding work. Um, uh, there was a lot of um, initial sort of uh, thought that this was going to be a wonderful uh, <laughs> venture, um, and uh, we had the passion for it, uh, but uh, it was a huge amount of work and a huge amount of capital required to sustain it. And in the end, we were under-resourced in, in both capital and manpower, yeah. And it sort of basically ended up with you having health problems. Yeah, well we, uh, in, uh, we had the um, situation work from about 2007 onwards that uh, we were starting to feel, feel the pressure in the business due to too much debt that we would built up and um, then, um, but we, we, we struggled on and uh, by, by 2011, of course, when the big earthquake struck in February, um, that was, was a real blow for us because um, we lost something like 40% of our customer base in the city and when, it was, when the CBD was all shut down. So um, you know, we used to supply a whole range of um, uh, restaurants, cafes, wine bars, hotels with our wines. And um, some of those have never re-established. Um, some of them are back now, but uh, that was a real blow for us financially. And um, and then within two or three weeks of that, uh, I had a heart episode and had to be admitted to hospital and um, have uh, stents implanted. And I'd only been home a couple of days and Jenny had a heart episode that saw her in hospital for five days. Um, but we recovered from all that and, uh, and we were motivated to really try and um, uh, sell the vineyard and move on. Now Glasnevin has to be a big feather in your cap. Yeah, well Glasnevin is a, um, another brand which was set up um, really around about 2005 and it was always meant, intended to be Ben's brand, Ben's uh, business and it is. He owns it and I'm now working for him as a general manager on a part-time basis and uh, for which he pays me a small wage, but <laughs> that's okay. Um, and uh, that was always focused on um, a limited range of wines. Uh, we only do four wines under the Clash Never label. <coughs> Three aromatic whites and a Pinot Noir. 
and limited production, but they are top-end wines in terms of quality and, um, and well-priced. They're, they're well-priced uh, value for money wines, but they are towards the top end. So they're only of a limited availability and we, we're focused on selling those wines to um, selected retail and fine wine dining restaurants, etc. We're not in the supermarkets. It's just a, a nice niche brand which I'm very happy working with. And you've got a very special line of Glasnevin Pinot Noir that you were very involved with. In 2012, uh, uh, we, we started talking about that, didn't we? Uh, we, uh, I made a decision that we'd do a special wine under the Glasnevin label, just to give some focus to the brand. And uh, the fruit came off the Fiddler's Green Vineyard. But it was all hand-picked and selected. Um, we only did 500 kg of fruit, but very carefully hand-selected and picked, and handy stemmed and processed. And I, I was involved in it all the way through, working with the winemakers at um, Pegasus Bay, using their facilities. And I only did, in the end, just a single barrel. Uh, 275 bottles were finally uh, produced. And each bottle was numbered, one to two seven five, uh, on on the label. And uh, it, I and having kept a full diary of the whole process, I felt it would be a really good marketing strategy to produce a book which told the story of this making of this particular wine. And uh, so that's what I did. And uh, uh, I had that. Um, I wrote it, I had that all um, um, edit, professionally edited and uh, proofread and then I had it um, through our graphics man, we had it formatted and uh, printed. And um, that book goes with, with each bottle of wine, that wine that we sell, in a black presentation box and uh, it's quite a unique offering. And there's still some left? There's still some left, yeah. <laughs> uh, you've ended up writing about your your winery dog or your, vine your vineyard dog? Yes, that's um, the, the whole business of keeping a diary and, and getting involved in writing and, and really enjoying that process with the 2012 Pinot Noir has stimulated, stimulated my, my interest in writing. I read a lot anyway and I've, uh, having been a former lawyer, um, I've always had a fascination with words in the English language. So. Um, uh, I'm really enjoying writing and now I'm about to publish a, um, a short book uh, that I've produced and written about our dog Jem, uh, who was with us from, uh, she came to us when she was three and um, she died at 13, so we had her for 10 years and she was an amazing dog, very special crossbred, crossbreed dog with a wonderful temperament and um, so we, the three of us, Ben included, really uh, still talk about Jem often. You know, she's, she left her mark on us and um, so I've, I've enjoyed writing about her and, um, and with my recent interest in, uh, in art, um, I have done a painting which will be, form the, a full colour cover for the book and I've done uh, three black and white sketches which will be spread throughout the, uh, the text. And um, I'm hoping to get that book out to, to the market within the next month. So, vineyards, writing, and now you're doing painting. How did you get into painting? Well, um, uh, I guess it's uh, having time to do, to, um, to do other things. I, um, now that I'm semi-retired, the work I do with, for Ben with the Glass Nevin brand is 25 hours a week on average. That gives me time to um, also spend time writing, uh, which I do with the computer and producing Word documents, etc. Uh, but also, I, I've always had an eye for um, good design and form. I've had a feel for uh, um, artistic things. Uh, when I was living in Wellington as a young man, I, 
I even thought about doing architecture as a career, but never, never pursued it. Decided to come to Christchurch and do a law degree instead. But um, the, uh, the thing is that I had the time, and someone said to me, "Well, look, um, you can uh, do. Uh, you can. There are art classes at Art Metro, at the top end of Papanui Road here, where." Um, it's not too expensive, and they, they have nine-week terms uh, where you go along once a week for two hours, and they have very good tutors, and um, you, you can learn, learn how to paint. And I thought, well, I'm prepared to have, have a look at that. So uh, I did that. That was uh, in June of 2015. So 15 months on, I'm now, I've now produced probably upwards of 50 50 works. And you are going to sell some? Yeah, I'm, I'm a, I need to because um, uh, we're becoming a bit cluttered here. But uh, I've gone from being a complete novice to now, in, in the words of my tutor, um, producing some very good work. And I have got a wonderful tutor, Livia, who is wonderful with colour and she's uh, very supportive and encouraging and she encourages me to develop my own style and um, and I just uh, it's um, I, I just I love it. So your advice to somebody your age is probably just don't lie down. Oh yeah there's, there's so many opportunities for it to do things try new things challenge yourself be active um, yeah um, don't stand still.